And then if you've got a valve that the diaphragm goes out, these have six screws, there's three on each side, and you take these screws out and it gets you right down to the diaphragm. A lot of times what I'll do, if I've got to take this valve apart, I'll take the solenoid off and set it aside. You know, it may be still wired in, so you kind of pull it aside. Then I'll take my screwdriver, fill up screwdriver, start taking the screws out. It just helps you with that solenoid gone, helps you get to this front screw there. And these do have a spring, and so what I'll do, push down on it like this on the top, or hold it some kind of way while I take the last two screws out. Once you loosen all the screws, you can take the top right off. Don't lose your screws. Now you've got access to the diaphragm. And this is the diaphragm that you would end up changing if it gets messed up. And when you're putting it back on, you've got these two holes that line up with these two little tabs. And you've got to make sure this hole goes right over that because that's where your solenoid goes. That's how it's going to open up. Put your new diaphragm in. And then when you put that top back on, make sure you go straight back on there. Hold it down. Usually what I'll do is I'll get the two side screws to hold it down. So once I have those two in, then I'll go back and do all the rest of them. After I get them all pretty tight, but I will go back around and check. Make sure that they're all just hand tight. I like to use a screwdriver versus an impact driver or a drill. That way I don't mess up the valve, the base, crack it, mess it up. The next step would be put your solenoid back on. A lot of times if I've got a problem with a valve, what I'll do is I'll buy a whole new valve and then put a new solenoid, a new top, and then the new diaphragm to rebuild that valve. 